I recently participated at a black management forum discussion on the failure of black economic empowerment. What struck me most was that there was no disagreement about the fact that the policy of BEE has failed. There was, however, disagreement about the other important question. What now? It is obvious why BEE has failed, although, apparently, what seems obvious to some of us isn't that obvious to everybody, especially the politically connected elite. In this episode of Fact Sheet, which will serve as the first of two episodes, I will explain why BEE is a destructive policy. In the second, I will elaborate on why it is also immoral, for other reasons than the mere fact that it is a destructive policy. Of course, the reasons why BEE is destructive can also count for reasons why it is immoral, and the reasons why it is immoral can also count for reasons why it is destructive. But it is important to emphasize both points, nonetheless. So without further delay, here we go. In the interest of keeping it short and to the point, I'm going to elaborate on what I regard as the five most important reasons why BEE is a destructive policy. This, of course, should be viewed within the context of the reasons why BEE is also immoral, which, as I have said, will be pointed out in a different video. Number one. Firstly, the entire policy is an output-based policy, as opposed to an input-based policy. An input-based policy approach would have been one where the focus is on training and on education and preparing people for the labour market, as opposed to simply counting heads and categorising them according to skin colour. More than 80% of schools in South Africa are dysfunctional and the majority of them are in black areas. It is a fact that white children in South Africa receive on average better education than black children. The policy of BEE doesn't seem to care. All that BEE activists ever talk about is the skin colour of CEOs and top management who are, of course, less than 1% of the population. Number two, BEE is not interested in growing the economy. It is simply interested in shifting around opportunities on the basis of skin colour. The only sustainable way to achieve economic growth, if that is the goal, is to focus on policies that would be conducive to economic growth. BEE does the opposite. It is detrimental to economic growth, firstly, because it simply doesn't care about economic growth. It cares about power and political power. This brings me to the third point, which is that BEE is a replication of the world's worst economic ideas. It is a veneration of the economic ideas that have been tried and tested in communist China, the Soviet Union, Zimbabwe, Venezuela, Cuba and others while it is a rejection of the economic ideas which have led to the greatest success stories of the last century. Not only does the policy of BEE not care about freedom in the market, it is diametrically opposed to it. BEE is not compatible with the basic preconditions for freedom in the market. Number four, and this one should be obvious by now, BEE is the instrument through which the ruling party, the ANC, pushes its cadre deployment policies. Seen in this light, it is arguably the single biggest contributing factor to corruption in South Africa. The term BEE is a semantic fraud. It has nothing to do with empowerment. It is all about enriching the politically connected at the expense of the poor. And number five, at its core, BEE is a policy of government dependency. Within the broader policy framework of affirmative action, BEE contributes to making the black elite dependent on government in order to succeed. The black middle class is also left dependent on government through affirmative action policies in the workplace. Furthermore, impoverished black people are left dependent on government through social grants. Dependency is the opposite of empowerment. In conclusion, when we discuss the future of BEE, and we concede that a half-baked socialist policy has led to a half-baked failure, then we ought to also conclude that a more aggressive implementation of the same policy will only lead to a more aggressive failure. My name is Aaron Strutz and this is your Fact Sheet.